Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 14. In this video, we'll be going over our first highlighting option, and that will be using our cursor. I've started off by uploading four images of mouse cursors, and you can download those from Open Game Art if you'd like to follow along. I'll put the link in the description. And I'll start off by grabbing these textures and changing the import type in the inspector from texture to cursor. Now I'd like to change my default cursor. So I'll go to Edit, Project Settings, Player, and I'll drag my cursor into the default cursor texture. Now let's change our cursor when we highlight over this sword. So we'll tr for example purposes, we'll use a white cursor for the sword, a red cursor for the enemy, and a blue cursor for the door. So we'll grab the sword and the sword's child, our artwork, I'm going to go to the ply blocks and I will add a input on mouse enter and an input on mouse exit. Ply game and ply blocks doesn't come with a block for changing the cursor by default. However, it is just one line of code. The line of code we want is cursor.setCursor followed by the texture. Luckily, our very own Gage Lucas, aka March of the Ents, has made the block for us, and you can pick that up on his forum post, and you can find that link in the description as well. Once you've downloaded that block, we can then, on our on mouse enter event, go to his category, set cursor, and we will drag the white cursor in. On mouse exit, we will do another set cursor and bring it back to the default. Now there's one problem. When we pick up this sword, it will disappear before our mouse has a chance to exit. So our mouse cursor will be stuck glowing white. So to fix this, I felt that we could probably grab our player. And in his ply blocks, we have a on add item to bag. And we'll simply change the cursor back to default when an item goes into the bag. So that'll keep our mouse from getting stuck with a white outline. Now let's do this enemy here, and I don't want my mouse to change colors if I were to hover over a dead enemy on the ground, so on my, my zombie character's actor component, here it says disable components, I'll hit the plus button and we'll put a capsule collider inside. Now when the enemy dies, I will no longer be able to, to select it. Now that we've done that, I will once again go to Ply Blocks, On Mouse Enter, Set Cursor, and I'll do a red one this time, On Mouse Exit, Set Cursor, and I'll do my default. Once again, if my mouse is on top of the enemy and the enemy dies, our Capsule Collider will get turned off before the mouse has a chance to exit. So to fix that, I'll simply go to on actor death, and we want a set cursor default. However, just to be thorough, what if I set this zombie, for example, on fire, and then I was mousing over an item or a door or a chest or another enemy? I don't want to set my cursor to default when this enemy dies unless I'm currently selecting it. So here we could do a flow if, and I'll put this block inside, and we want if A equals B, and then get selected of player equals self. So that's a character, get selected of player equals self game object. That's in common, self game object. All right. On mouse enter, it turns red. On exit or death, it goes back to regular. So the last of the three I wanted to share with you is this door. Once again, on the door, in the ply blocks, we'll do an input on mouse enter. We will set cursor to a blue color. Input on mouse exit, we will set cursor to the default. And if I leave it there, it will stay blue when I enter the building. 
So here, on interact, we'll set it back to default and then enter the building. Let's hit play and see how this looks. Perfect. That's all for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, and we'll be going over our second method of highlighting, using materials.